Call on Deputy Owen O'Brien. Thank you, Chair, and, and sharing with colleagues. Chair, when Owen Murphy was the Minister for Housing, uh, he introduced a ban on evictions. And within a very short period of time, the number of men, women and children in state-funded emergency accommodation dropped dramatically. Over the space of three or four months, we saw a, a 60 per cent plus reduction in official levels of homelessness. Uh, when Minister O'Brien uh, introduced uh, his ban on evictions uh, last year, a ban we urged him uh, uh, to introduce, uh, unfortunately, we haven't so far seen any reduction in the number of people in emergency accommodation. The Minister knows uh, in November the number uh, of men, women and children across all categories in emergency accommodation increased. In December, the overall levels of homelessness increased, particularly driven by single-person homelessness. There was a modest uh, decline in family presentations. And while uh, the Department won't be releasing the January figures until later uh, this week, there is a genuine concern that, at best, uh, the levels will plateau and, at worst, will continue to deteriorate. Uh, and if we ask ourselves the question why, the reason is because the Minister did not take the advice of many frontline homeless service providers, housing policy experts, as well as many of us in the opposition when we supported his introduction uh, of the winter ban on evictions. Uh, what we have not seen over the course uh, of uh, uh, the ban period is any real emergency response to try and ensure that less people present into homeless accommodation and more people uh, exit homeless accommodation more rapidly. We are still having huge problems with the tenant in situ scheme. It has not been applied consistently across all local authorities. There has not been sufficient guidance given by the Department to ensure that that scheme operates quickly and efficiently to ensure uh, uh, HAP and RAS tenants uh, with eviction notices do not become homeless. We have not seen any definitive statement from the Department or the Minister to allow approved housing bodies to operate the tenant in situ scheme for affordable cost rental. I do know the Minister uh, has been privately supportive of attempts by residents in Tatney House to try and have that matter resolved, but I think we need something much clearer and more public across the board. And crucially, we have not seen the mobilisation in a manner, for example, comparable with COVID. Of all of the resources of government, existing emergency planning powers, procurement powers, new building technologies and vacant homes, to try and get some additional social housing stock in place uh, more quickly to tackle the ever-growing levels of homelessness uh, in the city. Uh, and as a consequence, we are now facing the ending of the ban of evictions at the end of this month and a very serious cliff edge. Yes, it will be extended for some, but a very, very large number of notices will fall due uh, from the beginning of April. That will accelerate into May and into June. And even if we start to see a levelling off uh, of official homeless numbers uh, in January and February, we are looking at the very real prospect of significant increases uh, uh, from uh, uh, April, May uh, and June. So the motion we have tabled tonight is urging the government uh, to do two things. The first is to extend the ban on evictions. It can only be temporary. It is an emergency measure. I accept that there are legal challenges uh, around an indefinite ban uh, on evictions, even with the caveats in the current legislation. But given the fact that the primary motivation that convinced Cabinet to support the last ban was that in October of last year, at least 19 local authorities had no emergency accommodation available at all uh, on uh, given nights, and the prospect of families with children having to spend the night in guard stations, as per Tusla rules, uh, I think convinced the government uh, to act. The fact that we are now potentially going to be in a much worse situation come April, May and June means the government has to reintroduce and extend the ban on a temporary basis. But I'm going to make exactly the same point as I made when we debated this last year. A ban on evictions is not a solution. A ban on evictions is a mark of failure. But all it will allow us to do is to use that breathing space to introduce the kind of emergency measures that you will hear many of us uh, on the opposition benches tonight and many people working on the front line of homeless services in the public and voluntary sector urge you to do. So, Minister, uh, uh, it doesn't matter how long your counter motions are. They are no substitute for actions that actually make things better for people on the ground. Uh, and the figures don't lie. More men, more women, more children than in modern history in emergency accommodation funded by your department. And that is despite the fact that we had a winter ban on evictions. So please, Minister, 
The time to act is now. The time to extend the ban on evictions is now. And crucially, introduce the suite of emergency measures that we are calling on you to do. We will work with you on that to ensure that when we have the second ban on evictions, that we see the numbers presenting as homeless and exiting as homeless go in the right direction. Uh, last Friday, I was in the Mitchells area of Tralee and I visited an award-winning uh, social housing scheme for older people uh, of 56 houses. Ten, I was, I was informed that ten of those houses are empty and another four uh, are, are, are houses which have, some have been unoccupied for more than th three years because uh, the tenants are in fair deal and they've been in nursing home for up to, up to, up to three years. So almost 25% of this scheme, which was constructed in around 2014-15, which is heated from a central source and uh, award-winning, as I said, are now currently empty. And on a local level, I see, Minister, that uh, the, the emer all emergency accommodation, the entire county of Kerry, is funneled into Tralee Town Centre, and you have four or five hostels within uh, 250 metres of each other. So there, on the local level, there seems to be no uh, coherent strategy for dealing with it and allowing people who become homeless around the county to remain inside in, in their local area. Uh, we have seen, of course, uh, on a general level, that the government has lost control of the home the situation. Uh, they didn't introduce an, an emergency response plan and while there are 11,000 people officially homeless, really that is up to 18,000 when you take into account the amount of people who are in emergency accommodation. So I'm, I'm calling on you to deal with it on a local level, give them targets. I, I was speaking to you last summer in relation to money that was made available for council to purchase and the councils then were saying that they didn't have the instruction um, I think the Taoiseach at the time described it as a cop-out by Kerry County Council, but there does seem to be a problem communicating between the two. But clear targets need to be given to the local authorities to deal with the housing stock that they have and also use the emergency planning and procurement powers to ensure that there are more social and affordable homes as well as extending the ban on evictions, which is such what needs to be done immediately. Thank you. David Cronin. Carla, our eviction is simply a word to this government. It's something that hopefully your government or any, or any members of your government will never have to face. But for too many of my North Kildare constituents, it, this looming eviction is absolute terror. It is the terror of joining the almost 12,000 people in emergency accommodation across the state. And that number, remember, takes no account of people who are sofa surfing or living on, living on floors of, of families, family members. Eviction is the terror of being reported to Thusla by the County Council if, and losing your children if they can't find emergency accommodation for you, which is so often the case in Kildare at the moment, and you're forced to sleep in your car. It is the absolute terror, like the working couple with a young child. The wife, uh, Ruby, works as a healthcare assistant in North Kildare. She's already been served with an eviction notice, and she's worried about being her, evicted from her home when, the, when or if the eviction ban is lifted. With her young family, Ruby, her husband and her young child, what are they going to do? There is nowhere to go. Across the state there's only 1,000, there's less than 1,000 uh, places available to rent. For another constituent of mine, Paula, eviction is the terror of losing her granddaughter to foster care. and not be, She's already not able to get her two grandsons. They're already in foster care because uh, she is, has an eviction ban on her and her, the home she's living in is only a two-bedroom home. It's a red letter day in the lives of too many people. Her, these two little grandsons who are in foster care, they bawl their eyes out every time they leave Paula and their, and their sister, um, every time they're leaving their, their family, Ara. The, the boys' case is up for review in June, and Paula's hoping to get a home with the, with the council so that they can come to live with her and their sister. But without a su suitable place, these boys won't be able to have a home and they're already deprived of the right to live with their family and their sister by this housing crisis alone. This housing crisis, it is a humanitarian crisis. It is a crisis that is breaking hearts, it's breaking families, it's breaking futures. 
children first, you say, but not for Paula and her grandchildren, not the three and a half thousand children in emergency accommodation. Like, it's just appalling. All the families with a fear of a report to Thusla hanging like a sword over their heads because the local authorities can't come up with the emergency accommodation. And when you think of it, you really should be ashamed because eviction terrorises the innocent and it terrorises the children of these families as well. Extend the eviction ban. I mean, the homeless figures released in December put it, the figure at 11,632, including 3,443. But as my colleagues have said, that actual figures are much higher because that doesn't take account of rough sleepers. It doesn't take account of those sofa surfing. It doesn't take account of those in the box room of their parents' home. And the, the temporary eviction ban was introduced to avoid people uh, being evicted over the winter period. But you also said, Minister, and I quote you, to afford us time for housing supply to increase and to reduce the burden on homelessness service and the pressure on tenants on the residential tenancies market. You said that. And we have consistently called in Sinn Féin for an emergency response in conjunction with this eviction ban. And to counteract the escalating homelessness crisis, similar or akin to something that was, like that was done during the, the, the COVID crisis. But you haven't responded to this as a crisis. And, and as a result, the tenants are facing a cliff edge. I mean, there's very few properties available, and those that are are practically unaffordable. I mean, housing rents in Cavan, in my own county, have increased by 19.8%, and in Monaghan by 15.9%. And I had a family into my office last week whose rent was €700 Euro per month. It's now going up to £1,250. They are absolutely distraught. They don't know how they're going to be able to afford it. Another young mother, she's a single parent. She's facing eviction in the coming months when the eviction ban arises or is lifted. Um, and she's been told that um, the council will not give her HAP unless she can identify a property under €800 Euro per month. It's not possible. She can't find anywhere. So you need to remove this cliff edge. You need to extend the eviction ban to the end of the year and then use that time um, to, as an opportunity to put in place emergency measures to increase and accelerate the supply of social and affordable housing um, as the existing targets are simply inadequate. We need 20,000 new social and affordable houses per year. And also local authorities seem to be in Interpreting the Tenu in situ scheme to suit their own means. I mean, I've been told by my own local authority that they don't ha have the, the facility to buy houses, that they only select those, but they're telling me differently. And any time I suggest them that they should buy a house where somebody is facing eviction, they're saying, no, 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 we're not buying that house. Uh, that will only make the, the house prices rise, and that will not help the situation. That's what I've been told, Minister. Thank you. Louise O'Reilly. <coughs> Minister, there isn't a day that goes by when I don't deal with people in insecure accommodation in either of my offices in Swords or Balbriggan. It is without a doubt the number one issue that we deal with and it's no surprise that the government reps in my area are largely absent when their constituents are looking for answers or looking for help. The situation is desperate for so many. The latest family across my door live in Balbriggan. They've been issued with a notice to quit and they're frantic because they have to vacate their home in May. They have nowhere to go. They have two kids in school in Balbriggan. They work in Balbriggan. There's nothing to rent in the town for them. Even if they could uproot their kids or manage the commute, there is nowhere for them to rent. They're hoping that the council will buy their house and so am I. But you say one thing, Minister, and you do another. Last December, you said, I've been clear with local authorities and there is no issue whatsoever with funding. That function is now delegated directly to them and we are seeing more homes coming in every day. But Fingal County Council said to a landlord looking to sell late last year, correspondence from the Department of Housing is that there is limited scope from acquisitions at this time. Government policy is to deliver social homes through construction. It's hard to believe, Minister, that you're serious about preventing homelessness. This is an emergency situation and it requires an emergency response. And what about those who have a medical need for housing? In Fingal, my constituents wait for up to a year to have their application for medical priority assessed. That was confirmed again in an email from the Council where they said, unfortunately, the housing support team are not in a position to indicate when a decision on medical priority will be made. The medical priority process can take approximately 12 months. So there's people on notices to quit 
who have a medical priority assessment pending, extending the ban on evictions is the only way that they will be able to stay in their homes. These people are sick and they are desperate. They are in the middle of an emergency. Extending the ban on, the evic on evictions is the very least that you can do to recognise that the trauma that's going to be caused to these families by eviction. Kids forced out of their homes, kids forced out of their schools, families forced to commute. And Minister, I ask, you know, have you ever been evicted? Because I have, and I'm not ashamed to say to you, it is traumatising. It is absolutely traumatising. To have your home taken from you, to not know where you're going to sleep, it is traumatising. This is an emergency, Minister. It requires an emergency response. Uh, <laughs> Egendal for her going to Egendal to hear down as Neil and on real to show a dialogue. I don't agree with one part of the, the party's uh, motion, and that's because it says that the government has lost control. You never had control. That's the problem. Is for far too long, uh, this government and other governments have failed to address this, failed to call a national emergency. And that's what it is, where you have all hands on deck to address a problem, kind of where you have uh, over 3,000 children in emergency accommodation, nearly 12,000 uh, adults in emergency accommodation. That's a, that's a national emergency, and that, as others have said, doesn't take into account those who are sofa surfing, those who are living in cars, uh, those who are living on, uh, uh, on the street also. Uh, obviously, uh, an eviction ban is not a long-term solution. Nobody is saying it is, but kind of, you've already had enough time to address the issues and you have failed miserably over that period. We are asking that the eviction ban uh, be extended to the end of the year and that the issues start to be addressed so that you don't have more families uh, in homeless accommodation. Uh, my own area has quite a number of homeless accommodation, homeless hubs, family hubs, uh, uh, and that is not a long-term solution either. We need homes, we need uh, apartments, we need flats, but we also don't need what some land Landlords are putting up uh, online at the moment absolutely uninhabitable and disgraceful uh, properties which they're looking for mad money for, uh, money that shouldn't be. That's extortion. But also, the state needs to get away from subsidising uh, private landlordism and has to move away from HAP and all of that in the long term. In, it, in the immediate term, we have to do it, but kind of that is what we're giving you the time to address in a national emergency. Brian Stanley. Thanks, you. All right. The eviction ban ends at the end of next month, and I am extremely concerned about the number of families and individual renters that are facing the prospect of homelessness uh, through eviction. If the ban isn't extended, uh, I have spoken to renters who have had them come into my office in the past week who are at their wits' end and are absolutely terrified, and I can't express this clearly enough to you. They are terrified of what is ahead of them. They need security of tenure. When the current ban was introduced back in November, as other speakers have said, we warned the government at that time that it needed to use the breathing space provided to introduce a series of emergency measures, including increasing and accelerating the delivery of social housing. You, Minister, stated at that time that the intention of the ban was to afford time to increase supply and reduce the burden on homeless services. We agree with you. Unfortunately, the supply has still not been delivered, and many renters now face the prospect of being made homeless. Uh, from the next, end of the next month on. Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin is therefore tabling this proposal, calling on the government to extend this emergency ban. We accept it's an emergency measure until the end of the year. To highlight the severity of this issue across the Midlands, there at the moment 153 adults and 67 children currently in emergency accommodation provided by local authorities. Many of them, in the case of County Leash, for example, they can be 50, 60, 70 miles away from home. If the ban is not extended, we expect to see that figure substantially increased. Those figures don't include those who are sleeping on couches, couples who are forced to move back home with their parents, 
young families in unsuitable and uncrowded, overcrowded situations. The latest daft.ie figures from last, last week showed that new tenancy rents, the average increase in those in leash, they are up now to 1,292 a month. That includes one and two, a lot, most of them are one and two bedroom accommodation. And that's an increase of 12.8% on last year. And in Offaly, it's up to 13, uh, 1,202 euros, up 15.6%. People simply can't afford to pay those rack rents. It's crystal clear, it's crystal clear to Sinn Féin that we're in a housing emergency and that the government have lost control. We're putting forward a package of solutions uh, to relieve the pressure and to increase the supply end and to protect renters. We need to see delivery of those 20,000 affordable and social housing each year over the next five years. And that's at a minimum. We need to use the emergency planning powers you, and emergency procurement to fast track. And on the tenant in situ, up, at least County Council at the last meeting, that the councillors asked for this circular, including the chair of the House and SPC, up, deputy, for the to the chamber. And it's clear from that circular that there is very, there's a lot of conditions on what the council can buy. And I would ask your minister to re-examine that. It's important that we continue this eviction ban and freeze rents. But in future, if there's what I call strategic uh, interventions and interruptions on either side of the house, I'm going to suspend the house for a period of time, which will have the effect of time being lost from private members' business. So if you want to discuss these matters and avail of the time, please do us all the courtesy of listening to each other. Now, our next contributors are Deputy Morris Quinlevin, sharing with Deputy McLaughlin, Crow and Caran. Gary Margaret, Councillor Dorla. Uh, Minister, you just said there we have to have an honest debate, and I agree with you. So let's start on the circular <coughs> that you sent out to local authorities about the tenants in situ, because most local authorities I spoke to, people working in housing departments, don't understand it, don't understand exactly what they can do. They, they need some sort of credibility on what's going on there. <laughs> People. Yeah, but the minister just walked out the door. We were talking. In fairness, well, like he the could actually wait. The to walk out the door if he wants to. I understand that, but he could the actually wait until some section is over. The second, the second one, but the minister's gone, so there's not much points in it here. But hopefully, I'll, I'll send him on the details of it. It's, the second one, he wants, if he wants to have an honest debate, let's have that about the Limerick Regeneration Programme. For instance, you can go into the Samiris Park area of my city, where there's 21 vacant houses owned by local authority, and they don't have the money to do it up. This is a regeneration programme that's been ongoing for 12 years. Uh, if you want to talk to the third one, uh, talking about councillors objecting to planning, go down to Limerick and look at the Fianna Fáil councillors and, and, the, and the public representatives there, where they have, actually have a detailed printed leaf and explaining how you can object to social and affordable housing in, in their area. So, Minister, if that's the honest debate he wants to have, let's have that honest debate. Um, we'll go back to the bill we're talking about, um, the motion we've done there. Renters need security and they need an extension of the eviction ban. They need that automatically. Anybody who has a constituency office will be inundated with people who are coming in. They're worried about what's going to happen when the eviction ban, and there is no clarity as to what's happening. These are really, really stressful times for people. You know, I, I, I had two couples in with me on Monday, and that would be unusual. I would have a lot, lot more than that. But two couples on Monday with notice to quits. Um, the landlord is, hasn't given it to them, but he's, he says he can't wait to give it to them you know, because he wants to sell the two properties. And the minister then was on about, you know, we, we're not nice to landlords or we're always criticising landlords. A lot of landlords are selling properties because, let's be real about it, they bought it during the, during, during the uh, crash. They bought them, the houses for cheap and they're now, the, they're now the highest price they've ever been. That's why they're selling that's why the bulk of them are selling. It's not because suddenly they're not making money out of being a landlord. They're selling it because it's a profit, and the profit is there now. So, Governor Margaret. Thank you very much, Ed. Deputy McLaughlin. Yeah, I, I note, Ken Corler, that the Minister made a speech with a range of provocative statements that naturally opposition responded to and then left without giving the opposition a chance to actually respond. So, in terms of house etiquette, I think that's... That's uh, certainly challengeable too, and, and much of the opposition hasn't even had their say yet. Um, I want to raise this issue, uh, Minister, and if maybe if you could raise it with your senior colleague. There was a cross-party delegation of councillors from Donegal that came here today. They protested outside. Uh, we're on the subject of people in desperate situations and trying to protect them. There's a sense put out by government that the defective block homeowners are, are sorted now. Everything's fine. If that's the case, why did a cross-party delegation come here today? Uh, around 20 councillors came here today, uh, and they presented in the AV room. Uh, and what they said is very, very clear. You have families 
uh, some of them with children with disabilities, with persons with disabilities, some of them who are older people, um, pensioners, who are being asked to engage with building contractors and try to find alternative accommodation for a year when there's nothing to be found, nothing, certainly nothing that would suit uh, families with disabilities. And the, go the government have just wiped their hands of it. No responsibility. Uh, they've been repeatedly asked, can they deploy the housing agency to build urgent, temporary, modular accommodation? No. Could they engage with holiday homeowners who might have properties available? No. Nothing to do with us. There's your money. Uh, away you go. But of course, they're not going to get 100% redress because you won't let the housing agency run the project. You're expecting traumatised homeowners whose lives have been destroyed to try to engage with building contractors uh, to put a, a square plug into a round uh, hole, to, to try and make an amount of money fit that just can't fit, to make them pay tens of thousands of euro. So, Minister, I'll ask you to speak to your senior colleague who's left early, uh, hasn't the courtesy to stay and listen to our point of view. Maybe you could uh, convey to him. Will he meet with Donegal County Council? Will he meet with the councillors who are here today, cross-party, including his own government councillors, who've called the scheme a sham, who've called out their own government and said they need to get up there urgently? Because I'm telling you something now, you're going to have people on the street again very, very soon in Donegal, Mayo, Clare and all of these counties again very soon. They're in desperate situation. You've put out a message that it's all solved. You've tried to con the Irish people, but very soon the Irish people will be very aware of the scale of this. So again, I appeal to you to ask your senior colleague to have the decency to read the transcript he left early and to go up to Donegal and to Mayo and meet the councillors who are profoundly concerned on behalf of our people. Minister, there are officially 11,500 people homeless in this day. That includes 3,500 children. That's a failure as far as I'm concerned. And I think that's a failure for anyone that's listening at home. That doesn't include those sofa, uh, sofa surfing or living in unsuitable and overcrowded accommodation. And parents and children stuck in their granny's box room. And we all have that experience. We've all met them and knocking on doors. We know, we know those families intimately at this stage because they call our office practically every week and ask, is there anything you can do for my Johnny or my Mary? So the true figure for homelessness is, 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 is out of control. The government and the one before have singularly failed to address the housing crisis that has gripped uh, this state for over a decade. Some of my colleagues have said that the government have lost control of the crisis. But again, you know, others have made the point, have they ever really had control of it? You know, it's getting worse. Uh, I don't see, you know, people say that you know, things are improving. I don't see it, and I don't hear it from people who are impacted uh, by, by the situation. There was a plan to roll out modular homes as a, as a short-term uh, solution. I think that was welcomed by us all. We've been looking for this a long time. But again, they're, they're months overdue, and we're, we're told they're over budget. So, uh, unfortunately, it, it seems to sum up the government's re record, uh, track record on relation to this thing. We, we, you know, they, again, they lack ambition in relation to this whole area. So, we're, we're, you should fairness, calling for an extension of the ban on evictions to the end of the year, except in such cases such as breach of contract by the tenant or where an, uh, an owner is homeless or at uh, imminent risk of homelessness. Uh, but, but again, we, we accept that this is not enough, and when governments introduced the winter ban on evictions, it, we said at the time it wasn't enough. The government needs to use emergency planning and procurement powers, new building technologies, vacant properties to increase the delivery of social and affordable houses in 2023, and above, above the current housing plan targets. So we're, what we're asking, Minister, is you be um, more ambis ambitious. And again, I'd appeal, Minister, to revise your overall social and affordable housing targets to ensure that at least 20,000 public homes are delivered in 2024. A ban on evictions is a stalling uh, tactic against homelessness. We accept that. But without massive increases in the supply of housing, it will, it will only stave off the, the inevitable. So one goes hand in hand. We need to be more ambitious. We need to stave off the, the, um, the inevitable but a ban on evictions, it needs to continue. The government knows this, and yet allowed more and more people to become homeless when they failed to introduce um, emergency response to this crisis. Yes. 
given the reality on the ground and the facts and the figures don't lie, it's, it's almost astonishing, really, that the minister spent 10 minutes of his time playing politics with this issue that he calls the most pressing issue of our time and criticising my party as if Sinn Féin have created and presided over record rents, record housing prices, record homelessness, and as if Sinn Féin have missed virtually all of their targets when it comes to such a pressing issue, as he calls it. And then he spent about two minutes then talking about CSO stats. And that will be a fat lot of good to the likes of the mother I spoke to today. Her daughter has additional needs. Her son has a previous history of self-harm. She's in a very difficult situation at home and potentially her and her two children will sleep in her car tonight. Now, talking to her about CSO stats uh, isn't going to do a whole lot of good. In relation to rents, and rents aren't just an issue in our cities, latest DAF data show that County Roscommon had third highest rental increases in the state last year, rents of over €1,000 a month on average. Likewise, Galway, average rents now per month, €1,295. We have people coming to us every day of the week and they are absolutely hopeless. There's no private rented accommodation, there's no local authority stock and there is nowhere to go. I looked at Ballinasloe before I came in here this evening. There is one property, a tiny two-bed apartment for 1400 a month available in Ballinasloe, the county town of Galway. And I just want to finish with this because I've heard many of the stories that have been relayed here this evening. This government, you are ruining the lives of children and they will never get their childhoods back. And I say shame on this government that you're now dithering about lifting an eviction ban to cause even more children to grow up in a homeless situation and ruin their lives as well. Shame on this government. I am Owen O'Brien. Uh, to reflect a bit, they have 2.5, 2.5 and 5 minutes. In this housing crisis, no people should be made homeless or be put under the threat of being made homeless. If the eviction ban ends in the coming months and if it is not extended, this threat of homelessness will become a reality for many families. Renters are stressed, anxious and fearful for their future, and parents are fearful for the future of their families. It is just not sustainable that people should live with the prospect of being evicted hanging over their heads. We know that landlords are leaving the rental sector in large numbers, and those who are still renting property are doing so at exorbitant rates. Another factor that is helping to skew the rental sector is the opportunity that Ireland's distressed housing market has given to the vulture funds, who have taken full advantage of the mess that is the housing market. They have bought up large housing estates and apartment blocks and are charging exorbitant rents for these properties. And they bought these properties by outbidding households by a massive premium, thereby pushing families even further away from home ownership. Such funds have the means to pay such premium rates for property, and they are prepared to do so because of the high returns for renting out these properties. All of this points to the failure by government to provide or build social and affordable housing. The government has failed to put together a functional policy for housing. Instead, the government has put forward proposals such as the shared equity loan scheme. However, historically, this policy has proven to be a failure and disastrous for people who ended up accumulating huge and unsustainable debts. The policy also caused an inflation in house prices. There is no reason to believe that this won't happen again under the shared equity loan scheme. What the government needs to do is to encourage and promote housing projects such as the Okulon Housing Co-op. Okulon has a proven track record of providing realistic affordable housing over the last number of years. The housing shortage is impacting on every aspect of daily life and the consequences that are being felt across many sectors of society. If people can't afford to find accommodation, then they can't take up that college place or nurses and doctors have to go abroad to work because they can't find accommodation here and so on. This toxic mixture of bad housing policy, spoiling rents and unaffordable housing 
is where we are now at record levels of homelessness. Let's not add to this by placing more people in danger of homelessness through evictions. Minister, the eviction ban needs to be extended. <laughs> Minister, I want to agree with my colleagues. This eviction ban has to be extended. And just to listen, this is a humanitarian crisis. It's a national emergency. And the minister came in here a while ago, attacked the opposition, attacked the owner brain, attacked the soil, answered no questions, and ran out the door and left you here like every time we have a discussion on housing. It's a medal the government should be giving you because Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael ministers won't come in here and answer the real questions. I'm dealing with people. Like, there are 11,632 people in homelessness, 3,442 children. Where are the government ministers? Where's the Taoiseach to tarnish that? Just to let you know, Minister, I was out canvassing last week in Mayfield, the Glen, and Octahini. In every, virtually every terrace in these council estates, there were boarded up houses. I listened to you waffle on there, no disrespect, right? The government has given money for 120 units when there's over 500 empty. There's 31 local authorities. There are thousands of houses boarded up, and you're not doing anything about it. It's a drop in the ocean. And you're coming in here listing off figures. These are real homeless people that we're talking about. These are people who are terrified. There's five weeks to go, and you can't give people an answer. I have a man came into my constituency, and I have dozens of families. He had three children in college and one doing a leaving cert, and he's to be evicted in April. Now, how is his children going to do their college exams and, more importantly, their leaving cert when they don't know if they have a roof over their head? And you and this government won't answer those questions. It's an absolute disgrace. It, 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 proof, if ever there was, that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are in for the big money, the vulture funds, uh, the cuckoo funds. But you're the Green Party. You were supposed to stand up for the army people. You said when you went into government that you would do that. But you're letting them, Mr O'Brien, run out the door here. I'm asking you, and I'm asking you to go to the Green Party. Will ye ban evictions? And just to let you know, in Cork City Council this week, it was unanimously passed to have the eviction ban for another year. That was Green Party councillors, Fianna Fáil councillors, Fianna Gael, Sinn Féin and the Labour Party motion, and we can't get an answer from the government. Thank you, Chair. The matter under discussion this evening, Minister, is of enormous importance. Um, we're talking about single people, we're talking about families, we're talking about children who don't know if in five weeks' time they'll have somewhere to live. Like, there, there couldn't be a matter more important for us to discuss. Uh, and the Minister's behaviour this evening, I have to say, while it's true to form, you know, kind of surprised me. He came in like a petulant child. He showed no compassion. He showed no comprehension of the stress and strain that hundreds, if not thousands, of people around the country are under. Uh, and then, rather than dealing with the matter at hand and the very reasonable suggestions that many of us on this side of the chamber put forward, he engaged in denial, he engaged in deflection and willful misrepresentation uh, of everybody on this side of the House to avoid dealing with the issues. And exactly as my good friend Deputy Gould said, he then scurried out, didn't even have the courtesy to wait for the person on the floor to speak, uh, and he left you once again carrying the can. And there's only one conclusion that I can draw from the Minister's behaviour. Richard Boybard is right. The Minister for Housing does not care. If he was, he would have been here for the two hours of this debate, would have listened, would have considered, and would have responded with some level of consideration. And what we're asking for <coughs> isn't unreasonable. <coughs> we're asking for the government to announce at the earliest opportunity that it is your intention to extend the emergency ban on evictions. It is going to have to be done, Minister, and the sooner you announce it, the better. We're asking you to accept what we are all telling you, that the tenant in situ scheme is not working the way the Minister believes, and to rectify those problems in the detailed manner that I wrote to the Minister months ago uh, regarding. <coughs> 
we're asking you to extend the tenant in situ scheme to cost rental. And of course there have to be price caps, and of course there has to be consideration of the rent. But the first thing government has to do is to say to extend the scheme to those who aren't eligible for the scheme at present and work out the details as appropriate afterwards. And on top of that, we are begging you to mobilise all of the powers of the state in the way that took place during COVID to add one or 2,000 additional social homes to the stock of social housing above and beyond your existing targets. <clears throat> the measure that the minister referred to uh, uh, the Part 8 derogation isn't going to deliver a single home in the next 12 months. We know that. Um, it's one of the reasons why I, I didn't think it was a particularly good idea, but we didn't oppose it because we weren't going to get into the way of the government. But it is not going to deliver a single extra home. None of the measures, with the greatest of respect to you, Minister Noonan, that you've outlined, are going to do anything or provide any additional comfort for those men, women, and crucially, children hundreds of children who in April, May and June faced a very real prospect of losing their home. Uh, and <clears throat> if the government keeps coming to this chamber and keeps telling us your plan is working, when rents are rising, when house prices are rising, when homelessness is rising, uh, and when even uh, 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 an increase in private homes has no impact on growing levels of need uh, or high housing costs shows you just don't understand. Waving over and over again the same tired speeches and the same uh, quarterly reviews doesn't convince anybody, least of all those people who most urgently need your help. So, Minister, <clears throat> I'm going to do what I do at the end of all of these debates. I'm going to appeal to you. Please, you and your Green Party colleagues behind you, use whatever influence you have this week and next to get the government to make a decision on this matter. Don't let it run into Patrick's week. Don't let it run uh, until uh, the 11th hour. Make a decision, and in my view, make the right decision. Extend the ban, protect the families, and introduce emergency measures to reduce the flow of singles and families into homelessness and accelerate the exit of those in emergency accommodation. If you don't do that, this crisis will get worse. Uh, and the amendment in the name of the Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage. Uh, and the amendment, uh, the question is that the amendment be made. Not agreed. Yeah, not agreed. Yeah, can't say, uh, uh, on the in the Kenya. I believe the question is carried. Vote all. Vote all. The will take place at the usual time uh, at 4.30.